Editing can be a nightmare for beginners, so if you're new to editing or you're new to the Insta360 2020 software, then in this video I'm going to guide you through it step by step. My name's Rich and this channel's dedicated to making 360 easier for everyone, so if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider hitting the subscribe button. Okay, so let's get straight to it. The first thing you need to do is import your photos or your videos, and you can do this two ways. First you can select file and then go down to open files and find the file on your computer or you can select the big arrow here and navigate to your files that way. Okay, so now we've opened our files. Before we start to edit, let's take a look at the overall layout. So at the top we have file, which you'll use mainly for opening files and exporting your project. Under the edit tab, I never really use this, but what it does do is give you a list of all the shortcuts that you can use on the keyboard for editing your footage. Also, if you want to clear all your keyframes or your speed settings or take a snapshot from your video, you can do that from the edit tab. Under the play tab, you also have some more keyboard shortcuts and you can also change whether your clip loops when it comes to the end for playback. So basically it starts again when it finishes playing. Under settings, if you have a PC, then this tab is really important. Sometimes when you update the software on some computers, when you export it, all you'll see is a green screen. And this is because you have to go to this settings tab and preferences and deselect this box here, enable CUDA acceleration. And if we select other, you can also change where your project is saved. Under the window tab, you can select what you want to appear on your screen when you're editing, but I usually just leave all of these ticked so I see all the windows like you can see here. In this area, here is where you will see all of your footage your photos and your videos and you can either see all of your files at once or you can switch between photos and videos. You can also mark any clips as your favourite clips by first selecting the clip and then selecting the star icon here and your favourite clips will then appear under the favourite tab. These two icons here allow you to switch between a thumbnail view of your clips or a list view so you can see the file numbers. And if you want to delete any of your clips, then select the bin icon here. In the middle, this is your main viewing window. Okay, so over to the settings on the right. You have three tabs, the basic settings. Here I would keep all the defaults selected. And if you've used the dive case or the lens guard, etc., then just select the appropriate box here. And if you have any stitching issues, you can calibrate the stitching here or try toggling these two boxes on and off as sometimes the stitch line is better when they're deselected. If you want to include the Insta360 logo, you can switch that on here by selecting one of these five styles, and you can change the size and position of the logo by adjusting it here and selecting bottom, top, left or right. And you can also add your own logo by selecting this box here. Under the Media Process tab, you can switch Color Plus on, which gives your image more vibrancy. Under File Properties, you can look at more detailed information about your photo or your video clip. If at any point you want to see your viewing window full screen, then you can select this icon here, and then you select it again to go back. Okay, so now you should be more familiar with the general layout, and there are lots of icons that I haven't looked at, but we will look at them in more detail as we go through the general editing process. So let's start with a photo, and we can move the photo around by clicking and holding on the left mouse button and dragging it around. So we keep dragging down to create an inverted planet and we drag up to go back to a tiny planet. And we can drag left and right to make more adjustments. And if we use the mouse wheel, we can also zoom in and out. We can also switch the view of the photo here by switching between default view, tiny planet, crystal ball, natural view and flat view. And when you are happy with your image, you can take a snapshot here. You then need to select the folder you want to save it in and give the file a name and it will save it as a JPEG. So now let's move on to editing video. There are two ways to edit the video using this software. You can either use a manual edit, which is what we'll focus on in this tutorial, or you can use the AI that is built into the software. I never use the AI in the software because it just simply takes too long. So for a 30 second clip, it would take about six and a half minutes on my computer anyway to analyze the footage and process it. And then out of a 30 second clip, it may create three shots. And within that six and a half minutes, I could have easily done a much better manual edit. So with a manual edit, you just have more control over the outcome and most of the time it's just quicker. 
But if you do want to experiment with the AI, then you can select the brain icon in the bottom left of your video clips. And as soon as you select it, the software will start analyzing your footage and create a number of different clips automatically. The clips that it creates will appear here underneath the main viewing window. So now onto the manual editing. Select the video tab at the top and then choose the video you want to edit and double click. The clip will open in your main viewing window and the timeline of your clip will appear at the bottom. You can make the timeline bigger or smaller by sliding this slider here. For shorter clips of say 10 minutes or less, I usually adjust it so I can see the entire clip at the bottom as I find it easier to work with. This yellow line that appears is a cutting guide and it helps you to select more accurately where you want to make your cuts. And you can turn this on and off here. There are two tabs that appear at the top once you open a video. One is view and the other is free capture. If you want to export your clip as a native 360 video, you need to stay on the view icon. Here you can look around your 360 image using the mouse as discussed before and you can switch the view here but when you export the video it will be a native 360 video so you can't really make any changes to your shot. You can change the length of your clip by trimming the start and the end points by either left clicking and dragging in the yellow rectangles at the start and end of the clip to where you want it to start and to where you want it to end or you can select this icon for the start point and this icon for the end point. To quickly get to a certain point on the timeline, make sure the edit guide marker is selected here and then move your mouse along the timeline and then left click on the point you want to get to. You can jump to the trim start and trim end point by selecting these two icons here. Also in this native 360 mode, you can adjust the speed of your clip by selecting the time shift icon. Move the cursor to the point where you want your clip to speed up and click on the time shift icon. Now move your mouse along the timeline to the point you want the increase speed to stop and click. You will see two times appear at the bottom. If you want to change the speed then left click on two times and you'll see a drop down arrow appear here where you can change the speed selected from a quarter speed right up to 64 times. If you shoot your clip at 25 frames per second or 30 frames per second, which is the standard speed, and then you try and slow it down using time shift, this won't be as effective as shooting at a slower speed, such as 50 frames per second or 100 frames per second. So if you're gonna use time shift and slow your shots down, then make sure that you've shot it at a higher frame rate to start with. You can now select other points on your timeline where you want to adjust the speed and you can adjust as many different sections of your clip as you want. And when you're ready, you can export your clip by selecting this icon in the top right hand corner. So for native 360, don't change the resolution. The higher the bit rate here, the better the quality, but the larger the file size. So try and keep it as high as you can, ideally the maximum. And at the bottom, you can see how the bitrate affects the file size. Select your preferred encoding format, so H.264, H.265 or ProRes 422. H.265 is a newer compression standard with much more improvements over the H.264 codec. And it requires much less storage capacity because it compresses your files much more efficiently. ProRes has minimal compression and retains as much quality as possible and is seen by many as a proper editing codec. I personally use H.265 because this is the codec for me on my PC that just seems to work more effectively. So here you can also select remove grain, which is an AI effect, but don't just select this by default. You only need it if you are really pushing your shots in darker situations. It doesn't always do justice to your shots, so just experiment. With the file name, you can rename your file, but make sure you keep the end file extension intact, so in this case, a .mp4. If I remove this and type in a title without the .mp4 extension or a .mov extension if it's ProRes, then it will just ignore my title and it will default to the file name that it chooses. So it's really important that you retain that .mp4 or .mov. And the file path, this is just where you want to store your exported clip, so hit the browse to change that folder if you want to. So now onto free capture and reframed editing. Now this is basically manual editing and it gives you the most control over your images and your videos. Reframing is how I use 360 video 99.9% .9 of the time and probably that is the case for most of you watching as well. So this part of the tutorial is the most important bit. So the first thing to do is select your aspect ratio. So this is the frame size of your shot. 
and you can do that here by selecting 1x1, 9x16, 16, 9, 4, 3 or 2, 3, 5 to 1. Now trim your clip as we did before. Now add a keyframe by selecting the keyframe icon here. So when we select a keyframe we are telling the software at that point we want our clip to change. So we then select the type of shot we want from these icons we saw before that are now down here. So default, tiny planet, crystal ball or natural. I'm going to start with the default icon. Now move the shot around with the mouse to where you want the shot to begin from. I'm going to move the shot around to the car's point of view. Now play the clip and then pause it at the point you want the clip to change again. Remember that as soon as the video hits a keyframe, it will then start to transition to the next keyframe so that the keyframes transition and progress slowly and smoothly from one keyframe to another. If you want the transitions to take longer, then move the keyframes further apart by dragging them with the mouse. If you want to delete a keyframe at any point, then select the keyframe and then click on this icon here. You can even come out to a tiny planet from a standard view using the same process. So input another keyframe and now select tiny planet and then fine tune your shot on the screen with your mouse. To preview the transition, drag your mouse back to the previous keyframe and you'll see how it transitions from one keyframe to the next. Or to watch the whole sequence, select this icon and then press play. Continue the process and input keyframes until you reach the end of your clip. Now if you want to, you can make adjustments to how the keyframe transitions from one to another. So click on the line in between the keyframes and then go to the transitions menu here and experiment with the different transition types. I usually use Smooth Dissolve, but you may prefer to use one of the others. If you're a numbers person rather than a visual person, or if you want to fine tune your shot, you can adjust all of the specifics of your shot here by clicking on the up and down arrows or by inputting a specific angle into the box. On this opening shot, for example, the roll angle is off. So to correct the horizon, I would click on the keyframe and then adjust the roll angle here. You can also adjust here the pan angle, the tilt angle, and the field of view and the distance. The two that I use here a lot are the roll angle to adjust the horizon and the field of view to make the shot wider or narrower. The keyboard shortcuts that I use are spacebar for playing and pausing and the arrow keys for advancing one keyframe at a time when I want to make very specific adjustments to my clips. The other features we can use here are the direction lock which is up here and that locks the shot to the direction of the camera. So here with direction lock off, the shot gets very ugly because the car is changing direction but we haven't locked the camera in position. If we now select direction lock, the camera follows the angle of the car around smoothly. You can also use the time shift feature here as we did before with the 360 clip by selecting this icon here. To demonstrate the next feature that you can use, I'll have to change the clip. So here we are going to use Deep Track, which is the desktop tracking feature. So find your subject in the video, now select the Deep Track icon here, and then left click and drag a square over your subject. The AI will now track your subject in the shot and keep them in the middle of your frame, and it's that simple. Now you're ready to export your clip using the same method we talked about at the beginning of the video with a few variations. First of all, now we are in Free Capture, the Media Process tab in the top right hand corner has changed slightly. We now have some true audio filters that we can select and these are basically noise reduction filters and they are used specifically in windy conditions. I have made other videos about these filters, I don't use them and I don't like them but if you want to experiment with them then you know where they are. Now when we select the export icon, the export pop up in the middle has both the colour plus and the remove grain icon and the result of these won't be seen until we export the clip. You can either export your clip in the default 1920x1080 or you can change it to 4K at 3840 by 2160 But remember, the bigger the resolution, the bigger the file, and the harder some computers will find it to play the clip. Remember, the more that you edit, the easier it will become and the more you enjoy it. So just make a start today. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. My name's Rich, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.